Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ. In this video, I will bring to you the current affairs of 16th of January 2024. This is the National Startup Day. Let's start the video. Which of the following High Court has suspended all the mining licenses for stone quarrying within a 20 km radius of the Krishna Raj Sagar Dam? Now, Krishna Raj Sagar Dam is located on the Kaveri River. It is at the place where the Kaveri River merges with the Hemavati River. Hemavati is a tributary of Kaveri and it is located in Mandya district of Karnataka. Now, Karnataka High Court has said that because of the Dam Safety Act of 2021, the stone mining in a 20 km radius of the Krishna Raj Sagar Dam is not possible. Okay. Uh, this dam is very important because it was made by M. Vishweshwarya, whose birthday we celebrate as Engineers Day on 15th of September. So, because of the stone mining near the dam, the integrity of the dam could be in question. That is why Karnataka High Court has said no to the stone mining in a 20 km radius of this dam. Now, in Karnataka, you will find some other dams also. Tunga Bhadra Dam is the largest in Karnataka. But you also have this dam, Lal Bahadur Shastri Dam, also known as Almati Dam. It is on the Krishna River in Karnataka. That is also asked in the exam. And even the Bhadra Dam. Bhadra Dam is on the uh, Bhadra River, which is a tributary of the Tunga Bhadra River. That is also very famous in Karnataka. So, do remember all these dams. They can be very handy. And let me also tell you that uh, um, Karnataka government has recently started a scheme called Dr. Puneet Rajkumar Hrude Jyoti Yojana. Hrude Jyoti Yojana, where the heart treatment of the poor people will be done free of cost. It is named after the great Appu, actor and philanthropist Dr. Puneet Rajkumar. And KHIR City project is coming up in Karnataka near Bangalore Kempegoda Airport. Knowledge, Healthcare, Innovation and Research City. So they are building a KHIR City. That is also something that you should know. And of course, the Yuva Nidhi scheme where the unemployed people will be paid 3000 rupees per month if they have a degree and 1500 per month if they have a diploma. If they have a diploma and there is a new port, brand new port that is coming up in Karnataka called Keni Port. Keni Port is coming up in a place called Ankola Tehsil which is in Uttar Kannada district. Very near to Karwar Port and Keni Port is coming up where there is a Hatti Keri River. Hatti Keri River. Which of the following African country has been certified malaria free by the WHO, that is World Health Organization? It is Cabo Verde. Cabo Verde. Now, where is Cabo Verde? So, you can see the map and you can see Cabo Verde. So, it is now malaria free. And uh, so, Cabo Verde joins another 42 countries that are malaria free. And uh, uh, in in this area, you know, Africa area, Mauritius and Algeria, they were declared malaria free. So, African countries, they have the highest or the heaviest burden of malaria. Right? Now, recently, there is a country called Belize. It was declared as malaria free. This was in 2023. And there is a vaccine for malaria, R21 also known as Matrix M. This is developed by Oxford University scientists and it is commercial manufactured by Serum Institute of India. So, this is a vaccine that has been approved by the WHO. Let me also tell you there was a World Malaria Report which said that 27% of the malaria cases in the world are from Nigeria. So, Nigeria has the maximum burden of malaria. Democratic Republic of Congo, previously also known as Zaire, this country is second in the list with 12% and Uganda is third with 5%. So, these three countries have the maximum burden of malaria, right? Uh, so, malaria is caused by plasmodium parasite which is carried to the human blood by the female Anopheles mosquito. Female Anopheles mosquito. And let me tell you, there is an African country that was in news recently called Angola. Why Angola was in news? Because Angola has quit the OPEC, Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. And let me also tell you that um, United Nations Peacekeeping Mission has ended in Mali. The name of the mission was Minasma. 
was Minasma. It has ended after 10 years because Mali is now a stable country. And uh, let me also tell you that uh, the 19th non-aligned movement summit recently happened in Uganda's capital Kampala. Non-aligned movement summit. And can you tell me the African country to which India has given a loan of $250 million? It is Kenya. Kenya has got a loan of $250 million from, um, from India for modernizing their agriculture sector. Ganga Sagar Mela was held in which of the following state? Now my father visited Ganga Sagar recently. So in Hindi we say Har Tirath Bar Bar Ganga Sagar Ek Bar which means that it is incumbent upon every Hindu to visit Ganga Sagar at least once because Ganga Sagar Mela is such an important pilgrimage for all the people of the Hindu religion. It takes place in South 24 Pargana district of West Bengal. And my father visited Ganga Sagar when there was a match at the Eden Gardens recently between India and South Africa. So he immensely enjoyed Ganga Sagar. Uh, so Ganga Sagar Mela is held at the Sagar Island. Sagar Island which is a part of the Kak Dweep division of South 24 Pargana. So basically this is the place where the Ganga meets the Bay of Bengal. That place is called Ganga Sagar. And on the occasion of Makar Sakranti, uh, the festival takes place at the Kapil Muni's Ashram which is located on Ganga Sagar. So it is celebrated on 14th or 15th of January every year. In fact, after Kumbh Mela, this is the second largest Hindu festival. Because the population that comes here is in lakhs if not crore. So very very important. Uh, and Makar Sakranti is also referred to as Uttarayan. Basically it is celebrated in different places in India by different names. Right. So you call it Makar Sakranti in Kerala. Uh, even in North India you call it Makar Sakranti. Even in Haryana we call it Makar Sakranti only. Uh, but you call it Mag Bihu in Assam. Mag Bihu in Assam. You call it Pongal in Tamil Nadu. Um, you know, Uttrayan, you call it in uh, Jammu, uh, in Gujarat, you know, in different places. So it is celebrated by different names. Who among the following is the author of the new book called Gandhi, A Life in Three Campaigns? So this is a book written by former cabinet minister M.J. Akbar. M.J. Akbar. And it is about, of course, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation. NLC India Limited, they have awarded the contract to set up a greenfield thermal power plant of 2400 megawatt in Odisha's Jhar Suguda district to which of the following company. Now in Jhar Suguda, you also have the Veer Surinder Sai Airport. Veer Surinder Sai Airport. In fact, in Odisha recently, the seventh airport has been opened in Malkangiri in Malkan Giri, right? So 2400 megawatt capacity. What is the answer? Who will make it? It is Bhel, Bharat Heavy Electrical Limited. And it's a very big project. So there will be three uh, plants of 800 megawatt capacity, total 2400 megawatt. So NLC is a Navratan company under the Ministry of Coal and they have awarded the project to Bhel. So Bhel will set it up. Bhel will set it up. Is that clear? And uh, uh, in Odisha, um, you know, we will need water also. See, every thermal power plant needs water. So where will the water come from? Water will come from Hirakud Dam. Hirakud Dam. Hirakud Dam is also a Ramsar site. It is on the Mahanadi River and it is, around, it is in Sambalpur in Odisha. It is in Sambalpur in Odisha. It is a Ramsar site. So don't forget that. And what is NLC? It is Naveli Lignite Corporation. Naveli is basically a place in Tamil Nadu which has the largest lignite coal mines in India. So it's a Navratna company. Recently, nominations have been invited for the Rashtriya Vigyan Puraskar in the field of science, technology and innovation. These awards are coordinated by which organization? So these awards are coordinated by CSIR, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Rashtriya Vigyan Puraskar. Rashtriya Vigyan Puraskar, the entries are invited. So there are four types of awards that are given. In fact, these awards were started last year only. So we have Vigyan Ratna. Vigyan Ratna. Vigyan Ratna is given uh, to recognize lifetime achievement in the field of science and tech. Vigyan Shri. Uh, maximum 25 people can be given Vigyan Shri every year. And maximum 3 people can be given Vigyan Ratna. We have Vigyan Yuva. Again, 
विज्ञान युवा इज विज्ञान युवा शांति स्वरूप भटनागर द फुल नेम ऑफ द अवार्ड इज विज्ञान युवा शांति स्वरूप भटनागर अवार्ड अगेन इट इज गिवन मैक्सिमम टू ट्वेंटी फाइव पीपल एवरी ईयर एंड देन वी हैव अनदर अवार्ड कॉल्ड विज्ञान टीम विज्ञान टीम इज गिवन अगेन मैक्सिमम टू थ्री टीम्स फॉर एक्सेप्शनल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक राइट एंड वी ऑल्सो सेलिब्रेट नेशनल टेक्नोलॉजी डे ऑन इलेवेंथ ऑफ मे बिकॉज ऑन दिस डे वी बिकेम अ न्यूक्लियर पावर डू यू रिमेंबर ऑपरेशन शक्ति सो येस नेशनल टेक्नोलॉजी डे सिंस आई एम मैंशनिंग अबाउट साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एंड ऑफकोर्स वी सेलिब्रेट नेशनल साइंस डे ट्वेंटी एट्थ ऑफ फेब्रुवरी बिकॉज ऑन दिस डे सी वी रमन he discovered the raman effect for which he was given the nobel prize 2023 24 national equestrian championship in dressage will be held at which of the following places equestrian is nothing but horse riding so national equestrian championship in dressage will take place in a place called oroville oroville is a place in tamil nadu the answer is tamil nadu the answer is tamil nadu is that clear now let me tell you there is a woman called divya kirti singh why she was in news because divya kirti singh has become the first woman in india to get the arjuna award for equestrian sports for horse riding she has become the first woman uh, to get the arjuna award for equestrian so she was in news recently 25t bollard pull tug was launched at the titagad rail system limited in kolkata what is the name the name is called bhishma bishma now what is this pull tug it is used for pulling the ships and boats basically if there is a ship or if there is any boat if it gets stuck somewhere then you pull it and you take it into the deep water so it uh, helps in resolving the traffic right and how many these pull tugs they the capacity is 25 ton so they can pull maximum 25 ton capacity ship and uh, um how many so six the contract for six pull tugs were given to titagad right to titagad and if you remember in the month of october 2023 125 bollard pull tug was launched in bharuch in gujarat that was called mahabali but that was not made by titagad that was made by a company known as shoft shipyard s h o f t shoft shipyard in bharuch in gujarat right so uh shoft shipyard will manufacture 3 and titagad will manufacture uh 6 right um so 6 will be manufactured by titagad and 3 will be manufactured by shoft shipyard these are different contracts okay and shoft shipyard they uh, launched mahabali uh, in bharuch in gujarat bharuch is a city on the bank of narmada river in gujarat and then we have bollard pull tug called bish made by titagad rail system union minister dr jitender singh has launched the artificial intelligence supported telemedicine mobile clinic called arogya doctor on wheels at the ramnagar tehsil in which district of jammu and kashmir it was launched in udhampur in jammu and kashmir dr jitender singh launched the ai supported telemedicine mobile clinic called arogya doctor on wheel it is supported by ai basically this is a doctor on wheel so this uh, van or this uh, uh, mobile clinic will go to uh, far areas village areas in the uh, udhampur district where the healthcare services are very poor and uh, it uses artificial intelligence so ai doctor understands the language and responds to the patient in the same language the patient will be given free of cost treatment free of cost treatment is that clear Uh, so they have now started it in uh, udhampur but they are saying that uh, they will also launch it in other districts of jammu and kashmir recently d labs at which of the following institution has launched the build for billions startup accelerator program in partnership with reserve bank innovation hub and union bank of india the answer is indian school of business hyderabad d labs so d labs is a company right um and uh, d labs is a business incubator at the isb it specializes in mentoring funding and giving knowledge to the startups and reserve bank of Innov reserve bank innovation hub is headquartered in bangalore as the name says it is a wholly owned subsidiary of rbi it is a non for profit company or section 8 company and uh, it promotes innovation in the rbi so all of these are coming together 
uh, to launch build for billion startup accelerator program where they will fund those startups who help in financial inclusion um, they will provide uh, all the facilities to them they will provide support advisory capacity building networking opportunities funding if required and uh, they are they will support mainly fintech startups those fintech startups which are doing great work for migrant workers domestic workers gig workers especially workers in the informal sector so they are they want to help those startups which want to help the informal sector so this is the build for billions accelerator it's a 50 day accelerator it will run for 50 days in uh, isb hyderabad isb hyderabad is one of the top mba colleges of india India's first national highway steel slag road on Indapur Panvel section has been inaugurated on which national highway? So this is the first road in India that has been built with, uh, with steel slag. Steel slag is a waste product of the steel plant and it is on NH66. NH66. This is basically the Mumbai Goa National Highway. The Mumbai Goa National Highway. So this road was inaugurated by BK Saraswat. He is a member of the Niti Aayog. And steel slag technology in India has been developed by an institute called Central Road Research Institute, which works under CSIR. Which works under CSIR. And who has provided steel slag? Jindal Steel, JSW. Jindal Steel Company, they have constructed this one kilometer road. It's a four lane road on Indapur Panvel section of NH66. And 80,000 ton of steel was used, steel slag was used. 80,000 ton for building just one kilometer of road. For building just one kilometer of road. Now, um, you know, although they are saying that is it is India's first national highway, yes, they are right. Because last year, in fact, not even last year, in April 2022, now almost two years back, Surat in Gujarat became the first city in India to have a steel slag road but that was not a national highway it was a normal road it was not a national highway so yes technically they are correct technically they are correct and the steel for this steel slag for this road steel slag is a waste product of steel plant steel slag that time was provided by arcelor mittal nippon steel company which is the largest steel company in the world right so it was set up in hazira in surat in gujarat Hazira in Surat in Gujarat, right? And NH66 is a very long road. It is on the western coast. It connects Panvel to Kanyakumari. So it passes through Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu, right? It connects Panvel to Cape Comorin, that is Kanyakumari. Okay, let's move on. The Climate Conference 2024 was held in which city? It was held in Mumbai recently. And the theme was Decoding the Green Transition for India. It was held by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. This conference was organized under the Green Climate Fund Readiness Program with delivery partner UNDP India. So UNDP India supported this. Ministry of Environment, UNDP India. And there is a company called Avana Capital. They came together and they launched this. Right? We want to become... Uh, net zero by 2070 now what is green climate fund readiness program they basically provide grant to the national institutions to help them engage with the green climate fund right green climate fund basically is a global fund it was set up in 2010 by the united nations framework convention on climate change and it helps developing countries reduce their greenhouse gas emission greenhouse gas where is the headquarter of green climate fund it is headquartered in a city called Incheon in South Korea. So we have the Green Climate Fund Readiness Program, Avana and Ministry of Environment, they organized this climate conference in Mumbai. Is that absolutely clear now? Okay. Who among the following has been sworn in as a member of the UPSC? So his name is Shil Vardhan Singh. Shil Vardhan Singh, right? Uh, he has become a member. He, you know, he was the Director General of CSIF. Till December 2023, now he is a member in UPSC. He was given the oath by UPSC Chairman Manoj Soni. Manoj Soni. The President Draupadi Murmu has inaugurated the 5th edition of the Meghalaya Games in which city? So, these are taking place in a city called Tura. Meghalaya Games. And what is the mascot? So, mascot is a clouded leopard called Labasa. 
clouded leopard now clouded leopard is a very rare animal and uh, clouded leopard is the state animal of meghalaya so it is taking place uh, in pa sangma stadium in tura in meghalaya and 3000 athletes will participate in the meghalaya games right um this is the first time in history that the meghalaya games are being held outside shillong they always used to take place in shillong right last time these games happened it was in may 2022 76th army day was celebrated on 15th of january in which city so the main celebration of army day happened in lucknow that also reminds me that the mau cantonment is the cleanest cantonment according to the search survection and army day is on 15th of january the theme was in service of the nation why is this day celebrated well this day was celebrated because on this day km kariyappa he was the first indian to become the chief of the indian army he took the reign from uh, Francis Butcher. He was the last British to lead the Indian Army. So, K.M. Karyappa became the Indian Army Chief on 15th of January. 15th of January uh, 1949. That is why this day is very very important. And let me also remind you that Manoj Pandey is the Chief of uh, the Army Staff right now. Chief of the Army Staff Manoj Pandey, he has announced that Indian Army will observe 2024 as the year of technology absorption. Indian Army will celebrate the year 2024 as the year of technology absorption. Recently, PM Narendra Modi has released the first installment to how many beneficiaries of Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Gramin under the PM Janman scheme. PM Janman scheme is what? There are 11 critical interventions like Pakka House, Road Connectivity, Pipe Water Supply. So 11 facilities, 11 things will be done by 9 ministries for the particularly vulnerable tribal groups which are around 28 to 29 lakh in India. 75 particularly vulnerable tribal groups are there. They will be helped through 11 critical interventions by 9 ministries. And this scheme was launched from where? It was launched from Khuti, Jharkhand on 15th of November, the Janjatiya Gaurav Devas, tribal Janjatiya Gaurav Devas and also the state formation day of Jharkhand by PM Modi and what has he done now so there is a scheme called Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana or housing for our housing for all Gramin or rural Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Gramin what happens in this scheme so if you are living in a uh, in a like a mountainous or hilly area you get 1.3 lakh rupees for constructing a house if you are living in a plain area you get 1.2 lakh rupees for constructing a house. Now PM Modi announced recently that the particularly vulnerable tribal group, they will be given 2 lakh rupees. Instead of 1.2 or 1.3, whichever is applicable, they will get 2 lakh rupees. Okay. Now the first installment of this 2 lakh has been given to 1 lakh tribal people. So 1 lakh, they are asking how many beneficiaries? 1 lakh people from the particularly vulnerable tribal groups they have been given the first installment and total they will be getting 2 lakh rupees for constructing the houses and uh, in the pm janman scheme total 24104 crore will be spent by the government of india it will be spent by the government of india very very important question khanij bidesh india limited kabil and kamian se of which country they have signed an agreement for lithium exploration and mining so this is a company from argentina Camion SE will partner with Khanij Bidesh India and they will try to do the exploration and mining of lithium in an area called Catamarca. Catamarca is a province in Argentina and this is the first time there is a, such an agreement with Argentina. right? And uh, we have a lithium triangle. These three countries Argentina, Chile and Bolivia. So these three countries are a part of lithium triangle because they have the world's almost half of the world's total lithium reserves you should also know uh, that similar agreement we did with australia so after australia you can say that uh, that uh, argentina is the second country with which we have done such a agreement and you should definitely know about this company called kabil khanej bidesh india limited it is a company under the ministry of mines and it is a joint venture between nalco Hindustan Copper Limited and Mineral Exploration and Consultancy Limited MECL. So it is a joint venture between Nalco, Hindustan Copper 
and Mineral Exploration and Consultancy Limited. This company was set up in 2019 under the Ministry of Mines. Which of the following space agency has invited the application from people to put their name aboard the Viper Moon Rover? Viper is Volatile Investigating Polar Exploration Rover. So this is a moon rover of NASA. The answer is NASA. And uh, this is the NASA's first mobile robotic mission to the moon. So they will send robots to the moon which will be mobile which will be able to move on the moon and they will use spacex falcon heavy rocket to launch it viper viper rover will be launched in 2024 at the end of 2024 the date and month is not fixed so far so viper will hunt for water and ice on the moon south pole so this is essentially a you know uh, mission for the moon south pole so viper is name of the rover what is the name of the lander so lander is called griffin griffin and griffin is uh, made by an american company called astrobotic astrobotic is an american company based in pittsburgh and they have made the lander called griffin so griffin is name of the lander viper is name of the rover and yeah so this is a mission by nasa is that clear so this is how it will look and of course nasa will send artemis mission also so uh, artemis is their manned mission actually people will go on the artemis 3 mission so that was the uh, video for 16th of jan i'll see you in the video of 17th of jan in english thank you for watching study iq